My name is Magda. I'm a videographer, I work at America's Test Kitchen, and I have an insatiable sweet tooth. And while I'm not a pro, I've learned a few things about baking and dessert making since I started working here. Show-stopping confections may look intimidating, but if I can do it, anyone can. So let's do this together and make some dessert. Today I am making a chocolate pavlova with berries and whipped cream. It is crunchy, it is chewy on the inside, it's light and delicate, it's absolutely delicious, and I can't wait to get started. So the first thing I wanna do is draw a 10 inch circle on a piece of parchment paper. That's gonna give me a general sense of how big my pavlova needs to be. Just going to trace on the outside of this 10 inch cake pan, making sure that it's as neat as possible. You can see that it's really curly. I'm gonna flip this over once it goes in the sheet pan. And I also wanna make sure that the lead is on the opposite side. So I've got sugar, I need about 10 and a half ounces, some eggs, vanilla, a teaspoon measure, cornstarch, vinegar, and two ounces of chocolate. Good quality chocolate, about 78%. I need about six ounces of egg whites, which is about five to seven large eggs, assuming each egg has about an ounce of egg white in it. Now I wanna grade my chocolate, and I'm gonna do it on a piece of parchment so that I don't make a huge mess. Now I'm using my microplane grater. You could use you know, the small edge of a cheese grater if you'd like, but it is really, really important to grate your chocolate. I have tried to shortcut this process before and I finally chopped it and my meringue turned into soup, not the light and fluffy crunchy meringue that I was hoping for. It helps to break it into small pieces so that your hands don't melt all of the chocolate. Really lean in to this chocolate bar. It's always kind of fun working with chocolate. There's a little bit of elbow grease involved with this, but just keep going. It's all gonna be worth it in the end. I'm just gonna transfer this to a bowl and I'm going to measure it just to make sure that I've hit the right amount. Looks about right, and I'm going to set this aside as well. Time for my eggs. I am cracking the eggs over one bowl, discarding the shells in another bowl, and then transfer my egg yolks to another. I'm not cracking the eggs into the stand mixer bowl itself. I'm gonna transfer this bowl to another one. If you're separating a lot of eggs, it's a good idea to do this so that you don't get any egg yolks into the bowl. So I've got about six ounces I'm gonna transfer this to my stand mixer bowl. And now my bowl goes back on the scale because I'm gonna measure exactly 10 and a half ounces of sugar. I really like to be as exact as possible, especially with things like pavlova that are, pavlova is pretty sciency, and if I follow the recipe exactly, it gives me a lot of peace of mind. Now I'm gonna create a double boiler. I've got my pot, a medium sized pot with a little bit of water. I'm gonna bring the water to a simmer. And I want the sugar in these egg whites to dissolve completely. I also want the egg whites to come to a certain temperature. I'm going to whisk occasionally, and I'm gonna monitor the temperature to make sure that eventually we get to about 160 to 165. All right, I'm getting nice and steamy here. It's also important here to make sure that the simmering water does not touch the bottom of the bowl. I don't want scrambled egg whites here. I'm almost there. So I give this another whisk and let it come up the rest of the way. I turn my heat off. And I'm gonna bring out my stand mixer. Okay, get that in place. Now I'm gonna whip this on high until the meringue forms stiff peaks and is smooth and creamy. We're also looking for it to be really bright white and actually pretty shiny. Every so often I'm gonna check on it. 
that's not. You can tell this is going to be a very soft peak. I mean, it's, it's getting there, but it's a little droopy. All right, back on high. And for this, I typically err on the side of over whipped as opposed to under whipped. So really make sure that uh, you're whipping this meringue enough because keep in mind, we're gonna be adding a bunch of chocolate to this and that's going to take some of the loft and the, the stiffness out of it. So keep that in mind as you're whipping your egg whites. on high. Okay, now it's time for my vanilla. I need just a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I've got a teaspoon and a half of white distilled vinegar. I'm going to continue whipping, really trying to maintain the air and the, the loftiness of the egg whites. And now a teaspoon and a half of cornstarch. I think I am ready to go ahead and add my chocolate. Get this guy out of here. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit at a time. I think that will help keep the meringue nice and fluffy. I'm just going to fold as best as I can. It is going to be a little messy and it is very sticky. Think about working with, it's almost like working with marshmallow. If you ever made Rice Krispie Treats, you probably know what that feels like. And yep, spilled some chocolate, that's fine. And as I'm folding, I'm keeping in mind that it's not going to look very, very dark and chocolatey. Remembering to put the drawn circle face down on the sheet pan. And just to make sure that my parchment doesn't slip around, I'm going to just spread a little meringue in each corner so that the parchment stays in place. Okay, and now I'm just gonna plop. I'm gonna plop my meringue right in the center. Looking pretty good so far. Nice and tall. And it has lost, like I said, it has lost a little bit of volume, but I'm not worried about it. It's still very nice and spreadable. Pretty happy with the way this is looking. My oven is already heated to 250 degrees. Now I'm going to bake this meringue until the exterior is dry and crisp and the meringue releases cleanly from the parchment. That's gonna take about an hour to an hour and a half. I'm just gonna spread and push the meringue out towards the sides, remembering to make a slight lip on the edges of the meringue because that's gonna hold in my whipped cream and my berries. Once that hour to an hour and a half has passed, I'm going to turn off the oven and prop the door open with a wooden spoon. The meringue needs to cool in the oven for an hour and a half. Otherwise, I'll end up with a gooey pavlova. All right, my pavlova is in the oven cooling. And now I can start on my toppings for the pavlova. So the first thing I wanna do is chop another two ounces of bittersweet chocolate. No way this here, again, just like to be exact. And then I'm gonna chop finely, or as finely as I can. And this is a very thick bar of chocolate, as you can see. I bought a pound of it, so that's what I'm dealing with right now. Just going to keep going. Try
trying to get little shards almost of chocolate. You can use a serrated knife here. This is my favorite knife to use. It was a gift, so I use it all the time. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna melt this in a small saucepan. You can also melt it in the microwave, probably at 50% power for 20 to 30 seconds. Whichever works for you. All right, next up, I'm going to make a bunch of whipped cream. I'm gonna need two cups of cream for this. I'm just going to I like to hand whisk it as opposed to whipping it in a stand mixer. I don't really like bringing out heavy equipment if I can avoid it. And whipping cream by hand is just really nostalgic for me. Um, it's kind of soothing. And I love being able to see the transition from liquid to soft peaks. And this is looking nice. It looks, a, I'm sure it looks a little soft, but that's exactly how I like it. And now my fruit. I've got a bunch of blackberries here, some raspberries, blueberries, anything seasonal will work here, I'm sure. Now I need a tablespoon of sugar. It's going to help release the, the juices and the fruitiness from the berries. I also noticed that adding the sugar and really kind of working it into the fruit brings out the color. As you can see, the raspberries are looking pretty nice and red here. Everything's nice and shiny. And now it's my favorite time, time to decorate this lovely pavlova that is nice and cool. And because I feel fancy, I'm going to transfer this to a cake stand. See, that released really nice. I'm just gonna use my hand to stabilize it and then slip it right onto my cake stand. Yep. And I have that nice little lip there. It's gonna keep my whipped cream from flowing out the sides. Nice and soft. Nice little swirl right there in the center. Now my fruit right on the top. Nice and beautiful. Gonna corral any loose berries. And my melted chocolate that I melted in my saucepan. Just drizzle that right on top and this is starting to look so good. I'm so close to eating this. I'm so excited right now, this looks delicious. Fantastic. Look at that, I made a pavlova with berries and chocolate. This is the most fun part is cracking to this. And I just use a spoon, like if you're sharing this with other people, just to have everyone digging with a spoon. There's really no dainty way to eat a meringue. There you have it, a chewy, light, crunchy meringue with a delicious, whipped cream and berry topping.